Today we have two things. First one, I'm going to talk about energy conservation. And the second one, we will have 10 minutes to finish the, set, uh, the third quiz. Okay, so I will put the quiz at the end of the class. Um, so first of all, uh, energy conservation. Last week we talked about um, the energy work theory. And that theory, we talk about kinetic energy and work. Um, so this week, we are going to use another method to um, calculate the uh, displacement and also the, uh, the velocity. So let's review how many energy do we have so far. We already have the kinetic energy. That means if we have object, object uh, moves with the speed, then we see the object has a uh, kinetic energy. So if uh, object moves with speed, then the object has kinetic energy. And the kinetic energy is defined as one half the mass times the velocity squared. Okay. And the kinetic energy is a scalar and the unit is joule. This is unit. And uh, this is the first one. The second one is potential energy. Potential energy, we have two. First of all is gravitational gra uh, potential energy. Gravitational potential energy. The second one is elastic potential energy. So let me give you an example. If we have <clears throat> a ball on the top of a step, and this is the ground, and this ball is at the rest, at the top of the step. And if we release this ball, the ball is going to fall down. And during the falling, the ball is accelerated by the gravity. So the speed will increase. That means the kinetic energy will increase during this falling. Then we will have a question. Where does the kinetic energy come from? So if we need to increase the kinetic energy, we need to convert some energy into the kinetic energy. So we define a potential energy gained by the the ball when we leave this ball at a higher position. That is called the potential energy. Okay, so the potential energy is equal to uh, the work done by the gravity. So the potential energy, let me use EP around the gravity is equal to the work done by the gravity. So the gravity is mg. That's the weight. Then the displacement is the height. Right? We can use h or we can use uh, y. Let me use y. Represents the height. So mg times the displacement is the work done by the gravity during the motion. Then we see when this ball is at the top of this step, then the potential energy is equal to mgy. This is a gravitational potential energy. And the sec uh, second part, elastic potential energy, is defined in the spring. We have a spring at rest. If we stretch the spring and the length of spring increase, so the displacement is x. Okay. Then let's see. Um, when we stretch the spring, we push some energy into the spring because the, the force has done some work. And this work increases the energy of the spring. So if we release the spring, when the spring is released, it work goes back to the equilibrium state with some velocity. So when we release the spring, the spring will have kinetic energy. And where does the kinetic energy come from? And the kinetic energy comes from the potential energy. 
the potential energy of the spring is defined by the work done by the spring force. Okay, then let's do the integration. The work equal to the spring force times the dx. And we know this force is not uniform. The force depends on the displacement, right? Times a constant. So we need to do the integral. So the work equal to the integration kx dx. That's one half kx squared. So we use the one half kx squared um, to represent the potential energy of the spring. And x is not the length of the spring, okay? not the length, but the stretch length. That's the elongation, not the length is the displacement. Okay, so we have three energy here. Kinetic energy, that's one half mv squared, and potential energy from the gravity, that's mgy, and the spring and potential energy, that's one half kx squared. So if we are talking about energy conservation, that means we are going to calculate the total energy at the beginning. It includes uh, kinetic energy, potential energy, and we're going to calculate the total energy at the end point. That could be any energy, including the kinetic energy, elastic potential energy, or gravitational potential energy. Then all the total energy should be equivalent during this motion. Okay, so let me give you an example. Here is the spring and without mass, and we know the constant is 800. And if the spring is compressed for 1.4, uh, 1.2 jar of the potential energy to store it, how far must the spring be compressed? Okay, so that means we put 1.2 gel energy into the spring. Then we're going to calculate the displacement. So we're going to calculate the x. We know the potential energy of the spring is equal to one half kx squared. So we know the total energy from this motion so we can go to solve the displacement. Okay, the displacement is equal to 2e over k square root. And we can get this is 0 0.055 meter. That's a 5.5 centimeter. The second question, you place a spring vertically with one end on the floor then we lay a book on the top and find the maximum distance where the, uh, the spring compressed. So I find the mistake and from your homework. Somebody used the force equilibrium. They said at the maximum distance, they have spring force equal to the gravity of the book. Then they solve uh, the displacement of spring is equal to mg over k. Is this correct? Think about that. Can we use this equation? Um, as a maximum distance, we cannot tell if the spring force is equal to the uh, to the to the weight because you think about it in this way we have the spring we put a book on the spring at the beginning the spring is at the at the rest so if we check the force of the spring the force of spring and at the beginning if I put the time here the spring force is zero at the beginning, right? 
when we just put the book on the top and when we release, the spring has no displacement, so the force is zero. Then this book move down to some position. Then the spring force uh, increase because the displacement increase. So the force increase with time. Okay, and as some position, the weight of the book equal to the spring force. Okay, so uh, before this state comes, we always have the force smaller than weight. So if the force smaller than weight, this book has acceleration goes down. This book has acceleration and because the weight is heavier than the spring force, so this book uh, accelerates downward. So at some position, when this force are equivalent, suppose the force equal to mg, the speed of this book reaches the maximum. Because before the force are equivalent, and um, this book is accelerating. So when this force are equal, the velocity goes to the maximum. And before the velocity goes to maximum, this book is accelerating. So the velocity increase. Okay. So when the this two force equivalent and the velocity goes to the maximum, but we know the velocity goes down. So this book will keep moving down. So this book will keep moving down. And in this case, the spring force is larger than the gravity. Spring force is larger than the gravity. And the acceleration goes up. Right? The acceleration points up and this book deaccelerates. So at the maximum distance, the velocity should go to zero. When this acceleration goes to zero, the book will bounce back. So that means the spring force will increase to some value, then decrease. And the force equivalent position should be in between, not at the end point. And when this force are equivalent, the velocity reach to the maximum. And at the maximum distance, the velocity goes to zero. So if we check uh, uh, the velocity as a function of time, we can draw the similar diagram. So this is a velocity. So at the beginning, the velocity increase And when these two force are equivalent, the, as the velocity goes to the maximum, then this book deaccelerates. So the velocity drops down. Then when the velocity equal to zero, then the book reaches to the maximum distance. So that means at the maximum distance, the spring force is not equal to the gravity. So we cannot use this equation. So Kx doesn't equal to mg. So how do we solve this problem? We have to use energy conservation. So energy conservation says at the beginning, the book has a potential energy from the gravity, right? At the beginning state here, at the end state is here. So in this case, the book just drop down some distance. So this book lose kinetic uh, lose potential energy. The book lose potential energy, and the spring gains potential energy. So how much energy lose by the book equals to uh, how much energy gains by the spring. Right, so we have the potential energy lost by the book 
equal to the potential energy gained by the spring. That's the energy conservation. So the potential energy lost by the book is equal to mg x the displacement. Then the spring energy is one half kx squared. Then eventually you will get uh, the displacement equal to two times mg over k. So there is a factor of two in front of mg over k. Do you have any other question? Okay, if you don't have a question, then move to another problem. If we have a spring and we, um, this spring push the box on a ramp, then how do we solve such problem? Okay, we still need to use the energy conservation. But in this case, we need to consider the kinetic energy. Okay? So the box is two kilogram and the constant 400 and the displacement of compression is 0.22 meter and is a rest when it released and no friction. Okay, I like this word. So first one, what's the speed of the block as it slides along the horizontal surface? Okay. So when the box leaves the spring, what's the speed? In this case, we have two energies the potential energy stored in the spring and the kinetic energy gained by the box. Then let's see at the beginning. Um, the spring is compressed and the box is at rest. So we only have potential energy. One over, one over two kx squared at the beginning. At the end, when the box leaves the spring, the spring uh, has no energy here. So all the energy becomes the kinetic energy of the box. Right? So if this is correct, then we will have energy conservation. The energy conservation shows these two energies should be equivalent. We have one over two kx square equal to one over two mv square. Then we have solved the v right, equal to kx square over m square root. So that will be 311 meter per second. So that's the solution. Um, part B, how far does the block travel up the incline before starting to slide back down? Okay, because there's no friction, we will know the motion of the box will be, and the box move up to a maximum height, then um, slide back. We're going to calculate the height. of the box is a lift, okay? So let's see, it's uh, slide up and the box will gain potential energy from the gravity, right? So at the beginning, we know the box has no potential energy. It only has kinetic energy, one half mv square. That's at the beginning, then at the end, and the box lose all the energy. Oh, no, no, as the box lose the velocity because it reach a maximum height. At the maximum height, there's no velocity on the box. So if there's no kinetic energy, then the box will uh, slide down. But in this process, the box gets some potential energy. So at the end, the box has potential energy. Mg y, mg y. So 
the energy at the beginning equal to energy at the end. So we have kinetic energy equal to potential energy. So we have the displacement in the y direction is uh, one half v squared over g. Okay, do you have other question? Okay, if there's no other question, I'm going to move to the uh, comparison of the two theory. So first of all, I'm, uh, last week we talked about work energy theory. It says, if we know the net force, the net force is going to do some work on the object. So the total work done by the net force equal to the change of kinetic energy, right? Equal to the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. That's a work energy theory. And the energy conservation says the total energy at the beginning equal to the energy total energy at the end, at the beginning, at the end. And this is a true, only there's no friction. So if there's friction, then the energy doesn't conserve because the friction is going to consume energy. So eventually every energy will be consumed and the total energy is zero. So if there's no friction, then we will have the total energy at the beginning equal to the total energy at the end. And for most of the case, we can use each other method to do the calculation and we should get the same result. And let me show you an example and how to use these two methods to solve the problem separately and eventually we get the same result. Here is a roller coaster. We have a car and we know the mass of the car and the car starts at the rest, from the rest at point A here, then move to point B. We're going to calculate what's the speed at the point B. Calculate speed is a hint to ask us to calculates the kinetic energy. So kinetic energy at the point B has two methods. First of all, work energy theorem. Okay, let's do this calculation. Let's see what's the work done in this uh, process. Let's do a free body diagram. The car is on a track, right? So two force, gravity, normal force. And there's no friction, right? No friction, we have get frictionless loop the loop. No friction, so that's fine. And let's see which force has done the work. From A to B, the track is always perpendicular to the normal force. So the track is always perpendicular to the normal force. So that means the displacement or the velocity, let's see, we can see the velocity. The velocity is always perpendicular to the normal force at any instant. At any moment, the velocity is equal, is perpendicular to the normal force. That means from the work, work equal to normal force times displacement times cosine theta. So 
the theta is always equal to 90 degree. So the work equal to zero. That means during this motion, normal force doesn't do any work. Okay, this is the first thing we need to know. Normal force doesn't do work in this process. So the only thing can do work is the gravity. Because we know from A to B, there is a displacement in the vertical direction, right? And this vertical direction is parallel to the gravity. So the gravity has done this work and to change the velocity. So we know the work done by the gravity is equal to mg times displacement equal to the change of kinetic energy, right? Kinetic energy will be final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. It says the car starts from rest. So this equal to zero. Initial kinetic energy is zero. So we have uh, velocity equal to the mass canceled, we have two GY square root. Okay, then we have 16 meter per second. Here, let's see. Um, how do we determine the Y? It's too quick. Let's do this. Y is a displacement from A to B vertically. So we know the A has a height 25 meter and the B has a height that's 12 meter. So we have 25 minus 12. So eventually we get uh, 16 meter per second. Okay, so this is the first method. Second method is to use energy conservation. Energy conservation says the total energy at the beginning equal to the total energy at the end. Then let's figure out what's the total energy at each position. At the position A, uh, this car has potential energy, right? potential energy because uh, the car has a height, it's a potential energy. And there's no kinetic energy because A is at rest. So no kinetic energy. We only have the potential energy at A and equal to the total energy at the position B. At the position B, the B also has a height, so it has potential energy, but the value is different from A. A. And at the position B, there's kinetic energy. So energy conserved, so I have equal sign. And let's figure out what's the potential energy at each position. At the position A, the height is 25 meter. So we have mg times 25 meter. Position B, the height is 12 meter. So we have mg 12 meter, right? Plus the ek is mv square half. Okay. So Eventually, we get the same equation. That will be mg times 30 meter equal to one half mv square. So v equal to 16 meter per second. So that's how we use these two methods to give you the same result. One is work energy theorem, the other is energy conservation. So in the real problem, when you do the, uh, when you solve this problem, you can pick up any method, depends on your preference. Okay. Do you have other questions? If no other question, let me move to the part B. 
The part B says, how hard does it press against the track at point B? So at point B, we're going to calculate the normal force from the track to the car. So if the car is here, we do the free body diagram, two force, weight, and normal force. Right? Normal force goes down. And let's see, the net force is equal to the weight plus the normal force, plus the net force. And because this car is in a loop, so that's a rotation, right? If the car has a rotation, the, oh no, this car is spinning or is rotating in the loop, and the net force is equal to centripetal force. We know the centripetal force uh, has a relation. Centripetal force. I don't know if I get the spell right. Uh, but anyway, you know what I mean. So the centripetal force equal to mv squared over r. r is the radius of the loop. So we have mg plus n equal to the centripetal force. And this is ma, right? This is equal to Newton's second law ma, and the a is the centripetal acceleration. That is this one. Okay, so the normal force could be solved by using the centripetal force minus the weight. The velocity we get from the first part is 16 meter per second. So we have weight 350 kilogram and 16 square over the R, R is six meter minus 9.8 meter per second square. <clears throat> so the result will be, how much for this? Uh, 1.15 times 10 to the four Newton. Okay, this is how we get the normal force at point B. Do you have a question? So one more thing I want to do today is if we have friction. If we have friction, um, how do we use uh, the energy conservation or the work uh, energy theorem to solve the problem. So if there's a friction in the energy conservation, we will find that the total energy at the beginning doesn't equal to the uh, energy at the end. So what's the difference? The difference is the work done by the friction. So we can do the subtraction. We use beginning uh, the start energy minus the end energy that will be equal to the work done by the friction. And uh, here, all the value are positive, okay? They are the positive, so I use absolute value. So because we know the friction uh, at, at the most of, of the time, the kinetic friction we have done, uh, will do the negative job, the negative work. Um, but here I just use absolute value. That means the change of the energy will be the energy loss, uh, the energy loss uh, because of the friction. So this is how we um, solve the problem. So the energy doesn't conserve but the energy difference will be the work done by the friction. So let's do the example. Here is a, a spring and there's a friction. Okay. When the release, the block moves on the horizontal tabletop for one meter before coming to rest. The force constant is 100 Newton per meter. 
and what's the coefficient of kinetic friction? Coefficient. Okay. What's the mu k? So let's see. And at the beginning, let's see. At the beginning, how many energy do we have? We have spring potential energy, okay, from spring. And it starts from rest, so no kinetic energy. And what else? There's no, um, there's no gravitational potential energy because they move in the horizontal direction. So at the beginning, we only have potential energy stored in the spring. And at the end, there's no potential energy in the spring. And it comes to the rest, so no kinetic energy. So at the end, the total energy is zero. This is zero. So the difference is equal to the work done by the friction. This is zero. So we will have the spring potential energy that's one half kx squared equal to the work done by the friction. Let's see. The work done by the friction equal to the friction times the displacement. The displacement, let me use L. Okay, that's displacement. And let's see. The friction we know equal to the coefficient times the normal force. And the normal force from the free body diagram we know is equal to the weight. So we can change the normal force into the mg. So that's the relation. We will have the potential energy in the spring equal to the work done by the friction. Uh, friction. Friction. So the mu could be solved by one half kx squared over mgl. The k is 100 k is 100 x is a displacement of the spring that's a 0.2 meter 0.2 square okay m is a mass of the block that's 0.5 and g is 9.8 l is the distance of the moving here in the friction, we have one meter. Okay, then let's solve. And the friction is equal to point 41. Okay. Then of course, this is more than one. That makes sense. So the kinetic energy, or the, the kinetic coefficient uh, is always smaller than one. So do you have other question? If no more questions, I'm going to move to the quiz. Okay, so the quiz, you will find, I will share my screen. Here, um, that's the rotation. And you have 10 minutes to finish this problems and um, write down your solution on a paper, take an image, then convert it into the PDF file. Uh, at the end, you are going to upload, upload the solution under this section, March 15th to March 21st then you screw down to find your section number. So I have two section here. If you belong to my 110 section, you submit the homework into this link. And if you are my another, then you submit in this link. Okay. Um, both of sections has the same problems. So you don't need to worry about uh, the problem solving. So here's the problem and it's quick. So good luck.